Our next task is to try to relate these ideas of costs that we've just been dealing with to our graphs. So uh, let's start out with our average cost formula. Average cost is total cost divided by quantity, but that's not particularly uh, helpful for us. Let's break down our average costs into our fixed cost per unit and variable costs per unit. Remembering total cost is just fixed cost plus variable cost. So let's think about how each of these behaves. First off, the fixed costs. Well, this is actually the easy part because mathematically we already know exactly what's going to happen to our fixed costs per unit as quantity rises. The fixed cost part is going to be staying the same. The quantity part is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that will produce for us this green curve here, this, uh, I guess it's a hyperbola, right? Where it starts off high and gets smaller and smaller and smaller with an asymptote at this quantity axis. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to the quantity axis, uh, but never quite reach it. And this is happening, of course, because we're just dividing by progressively larger and larger and larger quantities. And so our fixed costs get spread over more and more and more units. Okay, well what about our variable costs? Well typically, this one's a little bit more debatable, but typically what we find is that as firms get bigger, their variable costs will, per unit will eventually rise. Um, one of the stories that we tell to justify this is as we get hard, bigger and bigger, uh, we have certain inputs that can't be duplicated. Like, for example, you're running your business. As you get bigger, there's only one of you. We can't hire another one of you. And so to the extent that this is your business, you care about it more than anyone else, you are running this business because you have particular advantages running this business, we would anticipate that as your business gets bigger, you need to re replace you with more than one of you. Uh, and that's going to mean that your cost per unit start to rise as you get uh, bigger and bigger, as your quantity gets larger and larger. Okay, so now we can put those two together. Our average cost, per, our fixed cost per unit starts out big and gets really small eventually. Our variable cost per unit, we don't really have much of an idea about what is going to happen, at, what's gonna, what it's going to do at low quantities, but as those quantities get big, it will start to rise. Well, our average cost is just the sum of these two. Adding vertically, because our costs are measured on our y-axis. Then we can add our green and purple curves to get our red curve. Well, what does that mean then that it'll end up looking like? Well, at first, our average cost curve is going to look like our fixed cost per unit curve. Our fixed cost per unit curve is falling fast, so our average cost curve will be falling fast as well. If our uh, variable cost per unit aren't changing very much, and that difference between those two curves is just going to be a constant. But as we get larger and larger, remember these fixed costs per unit go to zero, or at least go asymptotically to zero, arbitrarily close to zero. But remember the difference between average costs and variable costs per unit is our fixed cost per unit. So if our fixed cost is getting very, very small, then our average cost and variable cost per unit must be getting essentially closer and closer and closer together. So then as our quantity rises and rises, our average cost and variable cost curves will just get closer and closer together. So what shape then does that apply for our, vari for our average costs? Well, at first they're falling, eventually they're rising, and they must have some point in the middle where they stop, where they stop falling and start rising. And so generally we call this a U-shape average cost curve. 